Alright guys, welcome to my third video on Pneumaticraft. I actually recorded this episode already, but I was messing around a little bit, and I found a few new things I kind of want to talk about. So let's go over the video real quick. So first thing is the mana meter. The mana meter is actually very useful. The reason you're going to use it is it's going to tell you about your pressure in your tubes and your modules and stuff like that. So it's the air canister and a pressure gauge. Let me get myself one of those. And the pneumatic wrench. The pneumatic wrench is the wrench version of Pneumaticraft. So the recipe for that is actually really simple. It's just burst plastic, air canister, and a lever. Let me give myself one of those as well. And this thing will be used in one of my future videos. And like the assemble lines, you change this from an export to an import. Back to an export. You can use it to turn things like the charging station. And different things like that. So first thing we're going to go over is the air gate the air gate i really don't see a use for quite yet but i will show you how it's used if you have positive pressure in it it'll push you away and if you have negative pressure it'll suck you towards it so the recipe for that is four iron bars and a pressure tube and with the modules the way these work is you can put them on the top or on the side or however you want they're multi-block so it's kind of like the ae2 it's inside only one block so say if we grab a piece of stone, it's in the single block. So just like that. It's really cool. The way that it used to be is it used to be a tube itself that you had to make separately. Well, now it's not. It's actually a lot cleaner and a lot cooler. This is what I discovered. The pressure gauge. If you put it on an advanced pressure tube, it'll make the gauge go all the way up to 20 like it's supposed to. Or if you put it on a regular one, it only goes to 5. Really cool thing is, this does give our redstone signal. So if we get some redstone and a uh, redstone torch for later, it does get off redstone. And the recipe for that, it actually gives you the calculation. So if you scroll over it, it's right there. So it's redstone equals two times the pressure in the bar. So right now we have about 3.3, 3.4. I'm not quite sure exactly. Well, we're only getting six, so it's it's about three less than three point five because we would get it, be getting seven. So that's one really cool thing. You can run these to like say a uh, compressor. So say you run it to here, and when it gets to say four bars, it'll light up to here, and it'll turn your compressor off or on depending on how you want to do it. So it's a kind of a safety valve. Like I said, you have the advanced version if you put on advanced pressure tube. This is the really cool thing I just discovered. This advanced PCB board. I did not know what this was used for, but it changes how the redstone signal is used. So, if, say I click on it, it gives me this. So, this is, it is an interface that extensively defines how the module should behave depending on the redstone signal, and you can define a formula. So, if you're really good with redstone, I mean, pretty good it'll tell you how all this works you know it'll give you a threshold for bars and your redstone so you can change your graph however you want it to go however much redstone you want it to produce and all that all that kind of cool stuff so that's the use of this new advanced pcb board it goes into the module so here's the recipe for it it's the helium plastic redstone and a printed circuit board so that is really cool i'm really kind of excited and it works on all these modules except for the flow detector Works on the safety valve and on the regulator valve. So next thing is the flow detector valve. It shows you how much pressure is going through it. So say if you have compressors in another room or something and you're trying to pressure up a tank. This will go as long as there's pressure going through it. It also gives off redstone signals as well, which is kind of cool. But say you want to see if your compressors are on or off, you just plop this right on there. And it shows you exactly what it's doing. Flow detector module. It also has... Uh, formula so it's redstone equals 0 0.02 times flow of milliliters per tick and the recipe for that is turbine blades around a pressure tube and turbine blades are gold into redstone and a pressure chamber next thing is the safety module the safety module is actually be really useful for a lot of different things this is all set up for my previous video so the way we're going to do this is put a redstone there and this is also where your manometer is going to come into play. So right there we have seven bars, or seven redstone. So right now, this is really interesting. I'm, this is the first time I'm seeing this. So here's where your redstone is at, is that it's at seven. So your threshold is four bars. So your pressure is going to go off at four bars. So say if you change this, 
Actually, I know exactly what this is used for. Say if you put a redstone torch right there. And you have your manometer. So your threshold is going to be 13.5. So if we change this to... Right there. 4.9. Now if it gets above 4.9, the pressure is going to change. So before what you had to do is, like you saw, you have to have this long line of redstone. With that advanced PCB board, you can change how this is going to work. It's really, really kind of cool. So and then the same thing with the uh, regulator tube. The regular tube is a lot more interesting because the advanced gauge, uh, you can tell, it goes up to 20. So if you have an advanced pipe, it'll put a minimum or a maximum of 20 all the way up to 25. Is the explosion zone is between 20 and 25. Well, with this regulator, you're going to want to put this on, say, an advanced pressure pipe. So let's put that there. Put the regulator on there. Put the advanced PCB on there. And then we'll add a red zone signal. And grab the manometer. And the threshold is going to be zero. So let's change this up. So it'll let a maximum of, say, I usually do around 4.5. So the maximum pressure that'll go through this system is 4.5. So if I change this, that there, and we'll pressure this up to, it didn't work. Oh, well. Apparently, you gotta do something a little bit different for that. But the way it's supposed to work is you set up your pressure just right and it won't blow anything up. I'm not quite sure why that did it. Maybe it's because I had a regular pressure pipe in there. I'm not sure. That's how that works. And there goes that one too. Alright, well, that's explosions. That's how explosions work. So let's look at the regulator real quick. Regulator is two safety modules and one pressure pipe. So that's the really cool thing about that. Now, really quick, I need to clear my inventory. Explore right. We're gonna run over here real quick and try to go over the upgrades real quick while we have a chance. So the first thing is the volume upgrade. This adds volume to your whatever. Because it goes to almost any machine in Nematicraft. So it's gonna be four compressed iron, four lapis, and one air canister. I believe it adds a thousand milliliters of volume per upgrade. I think that's how that one works. It's the dispenser upgrade does exactly what it says. So you put a universal sensor, an air cannon, and a charging station. For some reason, this pack is universal sensor twice on a lot of these upgrades. And then a drone. Now let's look at the recipe for that. So it's four lapis, four nether quartz, and a dispenser. Next is the speed upgrade. This is used in most machines. This is actually very useful. So it's going to be four potions of swiftness, four lapis, and a cake. And the potions of swiftness is just sugar and an awkward potion, just like that. Life upgrade. These are actually very useful. They can be used in an air cannon, a pressure chamber, and a drone. The use in a drone is, say, it's hurt a little bit. The life upgrade will automatically repair it. The pressure chamber, if because the way it works in a pressure chamber, is the item is technically dropped on the ground. If you put a life upgrade in it, it will not despawn. So you really want one of those in a pressure chamber for sure. So it's four lapis, four apples, and a clock. Next thing is the Entity Tracker. The Entity Tracker is used in the Universal Sensor, Security Station, and the Pneumatic Helmet. I'll go over the uses in the Security Station and Pneumatic Helmet later, because those are just episodes all on their own. So you got four Lapis, four Moans, and a Fermented Spider Eye, and you're going to use a lot of Fermented Spider Eye, so that's the recipe for that. Then Block Tracker. Block Tracker is used in the Universal Sensor and the Pneumatic Helmet, which is either Pressure Walls or Pressure Chamber Windows. Four lapis and a spider eye. Item search is only used in the pneumatic helmet, and when I go over the pneumatic helmet episode, I'll show you exactly how to use that. And it's kind of expensive, so it's four eyes of ender, four lapis, and a golden carrot. Range upgrade. You're going to use a lot of these. You, they're primarily used in the security station, uh, the air cannon a little bit, pneumatic helmet. It's used a lot, and the universe sensor is quite used a lot. So you're going to make a lot of these, I guarantee it. So this is where all your lapis is going to go. So here's four lapis, four arrows, and a bow. Coordinate tracker. Coordinate tracker is used in, if I can find it, right there. The pneumatic helmet only. This is uh, used, when I go over that episode, you'll see why there's a GPS in the center. So you got four lapis, and four redstone, and one GPS. And the security upgrades. Security upgrades... Only time it's actually used as security is in the security station and in the pneumatic helmet for hacking and for security purposes. Everything else, what it does is if it gets to a certain pressure in the machine, the machine will shut 
well, it won't shut down, it'll relieve the pressure out of the machine itself. So you'll be using these quite a lot too. These are kind of expensive. So it's four obsidian, four lapis, and a safety tube module. So that's the upgrades. I'm going to show you just a sneak peek on the next few episodes. This is going to be the pneumatic helmet episode. So the upgrades that are just using the pneumatic helmet is the entity tracker, the block tracker, the item search, the coordinate tracker, range upgrade, and security upgrade. These are the only upgrades you use in a, in a pneumatic helmet. You can use them in other machines too, but these are the only ones that are in the pneumatic helmet itself. So when I get into that episode, uh, that I can't wait to do that episode. The pneumatic helmet is so cool. I love it so much. I used it in a PvP world and basically I dominated. So the next episode, guys, going to be on like assemble lines, PCB boards, and that kind of stuff. And then probably the episode after that is going to be the helmet. So I hope you guys enjoyed the little explosion that I did not plan on having and please if you guys enjoyed the video please hit the subscribe button maybe possibly look at my twitch stream and i will see you guys next time thanks for stopping by